Yeah, every day. Yeah, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. I almost forgot to do my own intro. <laughs> Happy New Year! Happy New Year. This is one of my favorite things that we do. Uh, it's just kind of been a fun tradition for the last, I don't know, five or six years or something, where uh, I've done a poll on January 1st every year going over uh, predictions of what we think, uh, will, what we hope to see in the upcoming year, right? So uh, I have on screen the, the poll from last year, so January 1st, 2025. We're gonna go over those results because let me tell you, we were a, uh, we're always an optimistic bunch. I will tell you that. I think, you know, the common problem with, uh, I think any of these aerospace uh, programs and companies is that we forget the, the golden rule is that whatever timeline you hear, you need to double it <laughs> for anything, whatever. If someone says a, a launch is gonna happen in nine months, 18 months. There's, there's very few uh, <laughs> times where that rule doesn't work out. So, uh, so with that in mind, now here's a word of advice. I do have a link in the description to the new uh, poll. I currently only have X. I actually forgot to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it up on threads as well. So if you're a threads user, I'll have that up there as well um, this afternoon. Uh, but uh, a friendly reminder, there's no good way to see what your answers were from the previous year. So screenshot your answers if you're curious for next year. Um, that like Do it while it's still live. So if you're taking this poll or took this poll today, Go through and screenshot it. You'll thank yourself later to be able to look back and be like, whoa, you know, it, it'll be fun to see what you got right and what you got wrong. I know if I had my my screenshot saved or whatever, uh, if I had a way to do that, I would have been very wrong on a lot of these. So let's let's go through some of them. So the first question that we had last year was, uh, <laughs> uh, how many times will SpaceX launch Starship in 2025? Um, this one... Good job, everyone. We actually all got right. It launched five times. So it was at the very bottom of that of that uh, poll estimate there at five to eight. Um, I was expecting, I would have been at the top of that or even maybe nine to 12 would have been my personal guess probably um, at, in January. Yeah, so that's obviously a repeat question this year again. Uh, that's kind of the big unknown. Now this one, we were very wrong. We were, look at that. We were very confident we'd see a Starship catch. I think it's because, you know, near the end of the year, last year, there had already been, what, two booster catches, basically back to back. The, you know, Flight 6 didn't catch, um, and then Flight 7 did, if I recall. Um, yeah, so so we basically had, like, back more or less back to back booster catches. Like, okay, booster solved. So, you know, upper stage will be right around the corner, right? And uh, no, that was not the case. SpaceX did not catch a Starship upper stage in 2025. And that will be, you know, you have to look at this, that it'll have to be an orbital mission. So I, we're not gonna see that in the next two flights for sure, because there's gonna be, have to be at least um, a shakedown of the vehicle. Likely they'll have to do a test or two, even once it's orbital to prove and demonstrate that they can successfully, you know, pinpoint land with no tiles falling off, with no debris flying off the vehicle before they're able to bring that back. So that's uh, that's probably the most wrong we were in 2025. Let's keep going. How did we do? <clears throat> Will SpaceX deploy a functional payload in 2020? Okay, I guess we were more wrong with this. The answer again is no. There was no functional payload. Uh, the key word being functional. Uh, obviously there were <clears throat> dummy Starlink satellites. So in a way, like at least they demonstrated the door but don't forget, those were suborbital, you know, Starlinks. The whole mission was suborbital. The rocket uh, Starship never got onto a, an orbital trajectory, so therefore the the payloads it deployed were also not orbital. They re-entered uh, relatively close to where Starship re-entered. <clears throat> I'm just kind of going to rapid fire through this because I do this instead of making a video about it, and I figure we'll just kind of keep going. So, will SpaceX refly a super heavy booster in 2025? They did. This one was shocking, and we were less optimistic about this one. Uh, the community got it right. 57.9% said yes, and that was correct. So that's, yeah, good job. But this one is funny. We had so much optimism about catching and basically having an orbital Starship, but we did not think they would refly a Starship upper stage in 2025. 78% said no, which is correct. So that was, again, a good one. So... Good job, everyone, on that one. Uh, that's pretty great. So the next one, this one kind of surprised me, but looking at it now, it's like, well, yeah, we, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't there. Uh, will Rocket Lab launch Neutron in 2025? We were pretty optimistic. 56.2% of us thought that, yes, they would launch 
Neutron in 2025? The correct answer is no. And I think this year I changed it to be, what's the furthest milestone? We'll, you'll see that in, in this poll, I did that with Stoke Space's Nova. I should have probably done that this year with, with Rocket Lab's Neutron. And I'm doing that, uh, I am doing that for 2026's poll. I think I said, you know, something along the line of, uh, will Rocket Lab, you know, launch it? Or will, will they stack, static fire, launch, land, you know, or something like that. Something along those lines where it's a little bit more milestone based. This one's a bummer. When will Sierra Space Company launch Dream Chaser? We had such high hopes. I had such high hopes, personally, for Dream Chaser fly finally flying uh, in 2025. And if you don't know what it is, it's basically like a mini shuttle. Um, really cool vehicle that was that's supposed to, uh, you know, resupply the International Space Station. That contract basically is now not to resupply the International Space Station. Um, yeah, th that's just a bummer. So uh obviously not in 2025 was the correct answer so 23.1 percent of you got that correct um the rest of uh the rest of the community was overly optimistic uh will sls survive 2025 not necessarily whether or not it'll ever launch again the idea being like you know at the beginning of 2025 we thought that jared isaacman was going to become um you know nasa administrator kind of near the beginning of the year that's how we thought that was going to go and uh it turns out that took a lot longer <laughs> than anyone thought. Um, and even now that he is, there's not really talks of SLS surviving uh, or not surviving. Sorry, there's not really talks of SLS not surviving. I haven't really heard any like, we're definitely canceling SLS. Like a lot of people I think thought, I think there'll be pressure uh, and potentially other options laid out potentially this year, but I don't hear any strong rumors of, of that. So. Uh, the correct answer is yes, SLS did survive 2025. It's about to launch again, and there's no significant legitimate rumors of it immediately being canceled. Like I, Artemis 3, I'm sure, will still use SLS and Orion. So SLS survived. So we were wrong. Uh, how many crewed launches will Boeing Space's Starliner have with humans on board in 2025? There is a, quite a few... Uh, votes for one, 28.4 thought it'd probably see one launch. Uh, zero was the correct answer at 35.5. Uh, there's the second most voted was that it would be canceled. Again, we, similar to SLS, obviously we haven't heard any, uh, you know, substantiated rumors that it's, you know, on the chopping block to be canceled. But uh, it, also who knows when it's going to be flying again. That's another kind of, that's pretty surprising to me that, um, that it's taking this long to refly again. And by the time it does refly with humans during an operational mission, it's like, well, now we're in 2020, you know, six and seven and stuff, years after it was supposed to. So yeah, here's a fun one. Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket will what in 2025? We had launched successfully was the second most. The most Common answer was launch and land, or the biggest number, I guess, was launch and land successfully. So you guys absolutely, well, not nailed. You got it right. Not with overwhelming, but they technically did both of these because they had a first, a successful launch with their, their first launch uh, of the year. And then the second launch of the year had the landing successful. So you guys were actually quite um, rightfully optimistic about New Glenn, and that's, that's awesome. So uh, obviously, I think you guys know New Glenn's going to be... Uh, a high up on the list for Astro Awards this year because it, how incredibly successful that mission was. It was fantastic. This one's a little bit of a bummer. Will a new European launch provider reach orbit in 2025? The correct answer is no. And I don't quite know the difference between no and not successfully when it specifically says reach orbit. So I guess in some sense, not successfully could be considered an option too, uh, because ESAR did launch uh, their Spectre rocket and uh, Spectre, is that how you say it? Um, but they, it did not make it much off the pad. So I guess it was not successfully. It was also, no, it did not reach orbit. So <laughs> both of those are technically correct, but that is kind of surprising. I mean, well, I'm, I think what I'm more surprised about is that we didn't see other uh, orbital launch attempts from Europe this, um, this year. So for a new, a new European, you know, launch provider. So that's a little bit more shocking to me. Um, and I didn't even include in that list, you know, all the people kind of at that 
near that stage. Uh, this is one that we're, again, a little bit too optimistic about. What's the furthest milestone we'll see with Stoke Space's Nova rocket in 2025? If you're unfamiliar with Stoke or if you haven't seen both of my Stoke videos now, I've done two tours with Stoke. I just released another one about a couple weeks ago or a week ago or something. Very recently, I just released a video with Stoke Space up with a full update. And they are one of the most exciting companies to follow along with because they're doing a lot of cool stuff. They're doing like the most unique, um, you know, concept of a rocket and they're getting pretty close like they're they're building flight hardware now um so unfortunately in 2025 we didn't see any of these we didn't see a first stage static fire we didn't see full vehicle stack we didn't see a launch so none of the above is correct at 9.4 percent um hopefully this year we see a launch i i would expect to see a vehicle heading out to the pad here you know by spring would be my hope they're building that booster as we speak. They've got the, the engines in production as we speak. But that could also be summer, you know. Um, I just hope that we hopefully see a launch by the end of the year. So that's another repeat question again this year. A lot of repeat questions. Um, how many orbital launch attempts will we see in 2025 around the world? There were 261 attempts in 2024. Um, now, I had to redo this one again uh, with the new numbers. Um, let me see the new numbers. So the correct answer for this was actually 301 plus because there were 330 orbital launch attempts in 2025. 330. It went up from 261 to 330. Yeah, we're, uh, <laughs> that's absolutely, that's shocking to me, honestly. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have got, I, I probably would have maybe guessed 300 or more. But I wouldn't have said 330. I would have thought it'd be like right at 304 or something like that. Um, crazy. Absolutely crazy. Uh, let's keep going here. Uh, will a Hubble servicing mission receive a green light in 2025 because of Jared Isaacman being NASA administrator? Again, A, it took a lot longer than we thought. B, uh, servicing the... A servicing mission uh, did not get yeah, greenlit at all, and we haven't really heard much about that either. But that is one of those things that I hope, before Jared uh, is done as NASA administrator, I hope that he puts some pressure on the on the concept of a, a Hubble servicing mission that has been already, I think, well designed and thought out and fleshed out and would have been funded and paid for entirely privately without any taxpayer burden. I hope that that can still happen. I would love for that mission to happen. We all would love to save Hubble. Uh, and the last one that I had of 2025 was how many times will SpaceX launch a Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy in 2025? Uh, they launched 134 missions in 2024. The answer to this one, what was it? Did it end up being 165, I think was the correct answer. 165. So that would have been, so 47.3% 40, uh, of you said uh, 135 to 150, so basically a mild improvement, you know, a modest improvement, I guess, um, over 2024. The correct answer was a decent amount more, you know, over 30 additional Falcon 9 launches, of course, most of them being Starlink. So that's, yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty crazy. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not really going to be doing any uh, answers and questions. I mean, I do see one that I probably should answer. I wanted to try to make this a succinct little standalone video. So if some people want to watch it later on, uh, I can ramble for a second. But one thing that I definitely wanted to ramble on before I do answer that one question that I see is uh, if you are available uh, January 17th and 18th, uh, you need to check out our lineup of Astro Awards. It is growing like crazy. These are all people, Astro Awards, I think I made a mistake of not renaming it once it became a conference because it's now two days of, of panels and speeches and a party and live music and a meet and greet and get, uh, you know, get togethers and all this stuff uh, with some pretty amazing people. I hope that you recognize some of these faces, you know, Eric Berger, Jack Byer, Amber Tr Trujillo, Brian McManus from Real Engineering. Uh, this is going to be Joe Scott now, maybe updated. Uh, Cyan, unfortunately, can't join us, but Joe Scott from Answers with Joe will be joining us. Jason Achilles, Charlie Garcia, who's kind of my personal, uh, the guy that I call when I have questions about spaceflight. Uh, Tom Markusik, the prior CEO of, uh, of, uh, of Firefly. Maybe you saw the first Firefly interview I did. Uh, we have astronauts from From2 coming as well. 
Uh, Scott Manley needs no introduction. Amy Shear title. Joe Bernard. Lori Garver. Christian Davenport. Zyla Foxland. I mean, yeah, it's it's going to be incredible. So uh, AstroAwards.live. Uh, get your tickets. The the top two t are almost completely sold out. Uh, we have a decent amount of general admission left over, though. So if you do want to do that, do it right now. AstroAwards.live. And, uh, yeah, and don't forget, I will have the Threads version of this up in a minute. I'll do that right as soon as I'm done here. And uh, and don't forget to fill it out. Take a picture this upcoming year so you know, or, you know, take a screenshot so you know what you did vote for. Um, and then let's answer that one question. I saw uh, it was, this could be a poll. Actually, I think it is in the poll, kind of when do you think Artemis 2 will launch. Um this is uh, Thomas saying that he's embarking on a, uh, a port, on a cruise, sorry, from Port Canaveral, February 6th. High likelihood the same day as Artemis 2. How much delay must I expect? I do not expect it to, to hit this, the front of the window. With it being the first time people are launching, I'm expecting it to be a few weeks, probably, beyond the initial timeline. But that's my guess. You probably got a little hint there of, of, how, I'd, uh, of how I'll vote for that poll question. So... Uh, we will see. So that's all. That's the whole stream there. I just wanted to make this nice and quick and go through all of the fun stuff that happened in 2025 as kind of a reminder of how exciting this stuff is. I think 2026 will be, I think it'll be the, the most exciting, coolest year in space flight in my lifetime. Um, you know, I think with Artemis 2, with Starship stuff, with New Glenn ramping up, uh, we have potential space stations going online. We have more lunar landers hopefully landing on the moon. I mean, it's it's ramping up. It's go time. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see, you know, stand here in one year from today and figure out, you know, how we did uh, for this, for the year of 2026. Um, I'm, I'm optimistic. I am hopefully optimistic. So yeah. And again, hopefully some of those missions end up at Astro Awards. So we obviously still do that. So that's going to be it. Uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic new year. Happy 2026. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for just hanging out and for watching my videos and supporting. And it really does mean a lot. I wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff if it wasn't for you guys watching. So happy new year. Cheers to 2026. Let's do some great things in 2026. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys very, very soon. All right. That's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space on Earth for everyday people. Goodbye, everybody.